Greetings and salutations. For those of you here just joining us, this is the second video of my tutorial on creating a Discord bot using the Python programming language. I highly recommend you watch them in order, and I'll put a link in the video description for you. In the first video, I showed you how to create a Discord account, set up your own server, and create a bot. In this video, I will show you how to make the bot actually do something using Python. Enjoy! You'll remember in the last video we created our bot using the Discord website, but he isn't active yet. Let's make him do something. Go to the folder where you would like to save all the files for your bot. Generally, I recommend creating a folder in your documents folder, but it really doesn't matter where you'll save it as long as you can find it later. For the purpose of this tutorial, I will create a new folder on my desktop and name it My Scripts. Now create a new text document in the folder you just created. Again, it doesn't matter what you call it, as long as it doesn't have the same name as the Python library that you'll have installed. In this example, you cannot name it Discord because that is already the name of the library that we will be using for this project. I will call mine my first script. If you don't see the .txt or .py file extension, you'll need to check the file name extensions box under the view tab. Now you should see the file type at the end of the file name. We will rename the file and leave the name the same, but change the .txt to a .py. Now this is a Python script instead of a text document. Right-click the file you just created and select Edit with Idle 3.6. Remember, Python 3.7 is not compatible with the current version of the Discord library. This is where you will put the code for the bot. Any line beginning with a pound sign, or hashtag if you're a youngin, is a comment. This line is not executed. It is only there to explain to humans reading it what certain bits of code do. You'll see I use a couple of comments throughout this video. The first thing you need to do is import the Discord library, and also import the bot class from the Discord library. Then you will create a variable called token to save your bot token. This step is not necessary, but go ahead and do it and I'll explain why I like to do this in a later step. This token will contain a string variable, as you can see by the quotes. Now open up your browser, go to discord.com slash developers slash applications, and select your application, select your bot, and then copy your bot token. Remember, this is what allows you to control your bot. Don't share this with anyone. Now go back to your script and paste this token into your token variable. Make sure that it's within the quotes. Now you will create the bot object. You can name it most anything you want, with some exceptions, of course. For example, you can't use bot with a capital B because that is the class we'll be using. You can't name it print because that will break Python's native print function. If you read documentation about Discord bots, this variable will either be called bot or client. I've always used client, so that's what I'll name the variable, but you can use either bot or client. The method we will be using to create the bot is the own message technique. We will not be using the bot commands technique. I will, however, briefly go over the bot commands technique in a little bit, and I'll explain why I prefer the own message technique. However, whichever method you choose to use, you will need to set your bot variable equal to a new bot object and pass in a command prefix. You need to set a command prefix even if you are using the own message technique. Then you will define a function that will be run when the own message event occurs. Type at client if you chose to name your bot variable, but you need to name it bot. Since I'm using client, I will type client.event. Then we will define an asynchronous function named onMessage and accept a message object. This function does have to be called onMessage. This is called by the Discord library and won't work if it has another name. In the function we just defined, we will print the contents of the message that we received. The message variable contains a message object, and you can read more about it in the documentation, which I will mention later. And it has a property called content, and we will print this content to the console. Type print message.content to do this. Then at the very bottom of the file, we will type client, or again, whatever you name the variable. If it's bot, bot, I chose client. Client.run and pass it your token. If you wanted, you could simply paste your token here. However, personally, I like to create a variable at the top of the file to hold the token. It's much easier to go to the top of the file and change the token in the variable declaration instead of scrolling all the way down to find the uh, client.run function. So it's just for simplicity and say if my token gets leaked and I have to reset it, I can just go straight to the top of the file and change it instead of wasting time searching for it. 
And now we can check to see if our bot works. Go ahead and save your file and then click run, run module, and a Python shell window will open. This is where our bot is running. I'm going to press the windows and right arrow key to snap this window to the right side of the screen. And I'll click on the browser where I have Discord open to snap that to the left side of the screen. Now you can see that the bot is online in this Discord server. It's the first time it's been online. Congratulations. If we send a message, do you read me, it will appear in the shell on the right, which means that our bot does, in fact, read us. It's certainly not perfect. For example, if we send an emoji, we will get an error message. But we've got our bot up and running, and that's something. Go ahead and exit out of the shell window, and the bot will shut down. He will still appear online for a little bit, but he won't respond to messages, and he will appear offline eventually. Go back to idle, which is the text editor we've been using, and let's add some more functionality. The message object also has a property author, which returns a user object, which has a property called name. We can set up the bot to print out the author's name along with the message they sent instead of just the message. Now when I send a message, it says testing JMM, which is my username, said hmm. This is pretty cool, but only we, the developers, can see the console, so it's not terribly useful. We need to make our bot send a message on Discord. Type await client.sendMessage, and then we need to pass the destination object that we want to send the message to, which in this case is the channel that the message was originally sent on. And finally, enter the content as a string. Save and run the file, and hop back into our Discord server and send a message. You can see that our bot now responds, but there is a slight problem. The bot responds to his own messages. Close the shell window, and this will uh, prevent the bot so he doesn't keep responding. And we now need to create an if statement to prevent the bot replying to himself. Above the line where we send the message, type if message.author.id, which is another property of the author object, double equals, and we actually want to make sure that it doesn't equal. So go back to the beginning of this line and add not equals a string. And we need to paste our bot's user ID in here. To get that, go back to our Discord window and make sure that developer mode is activated by opening up your settings page by clicking the gear icon. Click the appearance tab and scroll down to where the advanced section is and make sure that developer mode is activated. If it's not activated, click it and that will activate it. Now go back to your server and right click the bot's name and select copy ID. Be sure you aren't copying the ID of the message. Be sure you're right clicking on the bot and selecting copy ID. Now go back to your script and paste in your bot's ID as a string in quotes. Now this line says that if the message author's ID is not equal to your bot's ID, then the code inside the if statement will execute. Now type a colon at the end of this line and indent the string, indent the line where the bot sent his message to add that to the if statement. Now save and run the script, and you will see that the bot no longer responds to his own messages. If he does respond to his own messages, you may have copied the wrong ID, so try that step again. I like to save snips of code so I can reference them later. Go ahead and copy the send message line and then paste it below as a comment. This won't add any functionality to the script, but it will make it easier to remember the format that you use to send messages, so you can reference it later. Let's delete the original send message line and add in some commands. If our command, which in this case is exclamation point greeting, is in the contents of the message, then our bot will say greetings and salutations in the channel that he received the message. Now save and run, and you will see that when you send a message, the bot still receives it, but does not send a message in reply. However, if you send the bot command exclamation point greeting, then the bot receives it and also says greetings and salutations in return. If we change the capitalization, the bot still sees the message but does not respond. We'll change this in just a second. So go back to your script and go down to the if your command in message content and add the dot lower function. The bot will now compare your command with the lowercase version of the message it received. Save and run and you will see that your bot responds no matter how you capitalize your command. Now I'll show you an example of the bot commands technique which I mentioned earlier. 
you can see that instead of the client.event, we use client.command, which is called whenever someone posts a message that begins with the command underscore prefix that we declared in our initial bot object. Greeting is the name of our function, and instead of send underscore message, we just use client.say and pass it our message. As you can see, the bot commands technique is a little simpler to use, but has less flexibility, which is why I choose to use the own message technique. Essentially, you're dealing with the raw data if you're using the own message event. The own message event also passes you the message object, which contains the message author, which is pretty useful. So let's add some more commands. Perhaps a goodbye command. It's identical to the greeting command, except for the command name and the message that the bot sends in response. We can try it out and you'll see that the bot responds. There is one interesting side effect in that if both commands in a single message are sent, the bot will respond to both. This can be good or bad depending on your usage, but it is simple to fix if you don't want that to happen. Go back to your script and change the if to an elif or else if, which says that if the first statement is not met, then check the second. But if the first statement is true, don't check the second at all. So it can only respond to one or the other. Save and run and you will see that this works as expected. There are also a few other events we can make the bot respond to. For example, the own ready event. This is called once the bot is connected to the server and ready to receive messages. We will print out the bot is ready when the bot is ready. Save and run and you will see that the, the bot is ready is printed in the console when the bot is ready. Wow, that was a tongue twister. And that's it for this tutorial. In the next video, I will show you how to host the bot for free on Google Cloud. This is useful if you A, don't want to leave your computer on all the time, but want the bot to run 24-7, or B, if you're like me and have slow internet and don't want the bot to be hogging all your bandwidth. If you want to learn more about Discord bots and the Python library, you can go to discordpy.readthedocs.io slash en slash latest slash api. This documentation contains information about the client object, message object, and user object, all of which we use in this tutorial. Different events like the own message and own ready events, which we also used, and some more events like own reaction add, as well as how to moderate with a bot, kicking users, changing nicknames, and adding channels, and much, much more. Be sure to reference that if you're serious about learning how to build a Discord bot.